Hey, what's up everybody? This is Lawrence Lepis here, LJL Chess from Twitch, LJL Chess 13 from chess.com and leadchess.org. And today I'm going to be showing you my new chess set, the Bobby Fischer series. It's my favorite design, by the way. All metal chess set. Believe, fun fact, this, this, this particular design was originally started by Excalibur. It was discontinued and I don't know what company really... I uh, picked it up. I thought it was the uh, uh, Rochester Chess Center, chesset.com, uh, but uh, it's whatever company that, do, uh, that manufactures it for them, but I'll try to find that out later. But yeah, as you can tell, the pieces are very beautiful and everything. Look at that. Yeah, the pawns are set up a little bit awkward, but oh well. And the black pieces are shiny, beautiful. The white pieces are like silver, shiny, beautiful, and trust me, they are heavy. Never mind that sound, that's just the uh, rain hitting the uh, window. Alright, now, it's uh, it's fantastic, it's my favorite design of all the different chess sets of my life, uh, and, and uh, I've ever played with, and this is probably going to be my new favorite chess set, because not only is it my favorite type of design, but it's very, very heavy. Yes, it's... And each one has the felt on the bottom. I don't know. There we go. I don't edit my videos. This is just this is just raw. And now I'm gonna go over some of my uh, best games, stuff like that, and my proudest moments. For the this is from round two of the 2015 U.S. Amateur Team Beast Tournament. So I start off with D4. It goes with d5. I go e4. Because I'm basically setting... Because when I was doing this, uh, my opponent was 1911. I was rated 1558. So I decided to go with the most aggressive opening that I know. And it's called the Black Mardimer Gambit. Alright, he goes c6. Now it's the... Uh, he plays c6. Which is the uh, Carol Khan. So I play knight c3. He plays... D takes E4. Now, this is actually what's called the Raza Studier Gambit. Believe it or not. And let me see now. F3. He takes on F3. Now, look at the development of my knights. Compared to the development of his pieces, I can move both bishops out. I'm ready to castle soon. Alright. Uh, let me see now. Uh, he plays knight F6. I play bishop c4 because basically, alright, now the whole point of bishop c4 and a lot of openings is to simply attack the f7 square. Alright, now, uh, bishop c4, he plays e6. He plays e6 to block it. I castle king's side. Look how beautiful these pieces are. I'll even give like an up close view of it. There's up close view of the king and an up close view of the king there. The king and queen. Castle King side and he plays Bishop E7. Alright, and now I play Bishop D3 because heck, I'm already up in development. So 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 I might as well uh, put the bishop on a better diagonal. But the game's gonna get more fun. So he plays knight B D7. Now the computer says that this is a good move, but uh I feel it's not, but oh well. I feel it's questionable, like it may be not so great, but not so bad either. So I do knight e4, he takes. The reason why I think this is not so great of a move is because it allows him to to develop once more. Whoa, see? See how, see how, I'm sorry. See, it fell this way. See how heavy it is? It took a lot, it, it's heavier to pick up than most, most pieces. It's probably the heaviest chest I've ever had. Sorry, I'm, I'm mumbling. All right, knight, knight f6, uh, bishop d3, queen c7. For some reason, he doesn't castle. He, he plays queen c7. This is an over-the-board tournament, by the way. Uh, so, you know what? I put c3. Because basically, one of the ideas is to line the queen up here and attack along the h7 square. So, he plays c5. I play knight e5. Now, the whole purpose of knight e5 is to hinder in both bishops... To, I'm pretty much I'm restricting the uh, the two bishops. 
he can't move this pawn out now, and and the bishop on c8 can't move along this diagonal. That's the whole point. 95. All right, now he castles kingside. All right, here we go. Sorry, there we go. Uh, and now I do bishop g5 because I, I just couldn't think of a better square for this bishop at the time. I like bishop f4, but uh, he could easily move his queen out of that diagonal. Uh, bishop g5. C takes d4. Oh, listen to that sound. Oh, that sound is cool. Uh, all right. Uh, now, now he does queen b6. Now, now I set a trap here with king h1. I, I play king h1 here. Now, the trap is if queen takes pawn check right here, bishop takes pawn check, king takes or knight takes uh, bishop and then I have queen takes queen that's the trap and he saw that for some reason he decides to move his queen again probably to uh, to, to strengthen that diagonal by uh, the uh, d8 h4 diagonal probably alright uh, let me see now sorry uh, d8 now I'm figuring, all right, what do I do now? Uh, I could possibly move rook a, c1. But you know what? I think a rook left. Rook, rook f3. It's, it's great because now I'm threatening to put it on the h file and attack along there. So, all right, then he plays knight h5, which is good. But now this is where I need a breakthrough. So, so I'll... I'll give you guys a second to see if you can figure out what I played. Notice how the knight on h5 is not defended. So, you know, I am honestly just boom. Brook takes f7. This is where the fun begins. Now, he plays knight g3. Which is smart. But, uh, now, um, here's the trap with knight g3 check. If I play king g1, I saw this almost, uh, it took me about, maybe about half a minute to see it, maybe maybe a little bit less. If I move here, he takes, queen takes d4, check, bishop b3, queen takes e3, checkmate. Sorry. Now, instead of that, instead of going moving king g3, I just do ace takes g3. Then he now he does bishop takes g5. Now now I play queen h5 because now I'm attacking the bishop or I'm I'm attacking h7 square threatening checkmate on there. Alright. And now he plays bishop h6. Alright, I like that. Just, Black is pretty much in a losing position regardless of what he does. So now I just do rook a f1. Now he plays rook. Uh, now, now he plays rook e8. Sorry if this is not the best view. Now, white played a move and black resigned. The move is queen takes h6. Here is why. Checkmate is threatened on g7. Checkmate is threatened on h7. And right now it's checkmate in four. I actually checkmate in three, but like four starting from the first move. All right, now black's best move at this point is queen h4 check. G takes h4. G takes h6, because that takes care of both mating threats. Now you do bishop takes h7 check. King, sorry, king h8, because he can't take the rook, can't move here, because he's in check with the rook. Can't move here because he's in check with the rook. He can't take the bishop because he's in check with the rook. So his only move is king h8. Now you just do knight g6, checkmate. That's the reason why he resigned. Alright, um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please give a like, comment, uh, subscribe if you wish. Um, I might be streaming a little, a little bit later on tonight. See how I feel. I'm actually... And uh, have a good have a good day. Peace.